Yeah. Yeah. Ohio, Ohio player. <laughs> oh my God. That's one of the greatest songs, man. Seriously, it's so fun to play when you go and you play at like old school parties. Madness. They don't they don't do that stuff anymore, man. They don't have music like that anymore. And you know what? They created everything. People don't realize. You know, they created everything and they have such funky music, you know? It's just sad. Sad, sad, sad. It, it, it is. The state that we're in as far as, I mean, so my <laughs> girls were raised. I forced them to listen to old school music. Forced them. I mean, Parliament, Funkadelic, Barcase, Confunction, all of them. I'm like, this is what I grew up on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the stuff is so fun to play, you know, and you usually have to play it with like a big band, you know, seven, eight people, you know, you got the congas, you got like the horn section, <laughs> you got like two, maybe one or two guitar players, bass player, keyboard player, maybe five or six singers, you know, <laughs> cause you got to do those harmonies, you know? Is yeah. That well, I mean, but that's what it was when you had a band, oh, that's what it was. Serious band, you know? And, um, yeah, I, there was a local band that I used to play with called Devotion back in the day, like in the 70s. They, uh, they were like, they were the big band, you know, all the schools uh, hired them for the school dances. And uh, they, it, and for a while they were, they were, um, they were doing a lot of gigs. Uh, we opened for like Midnight Star. Oh, my yeah, goodness. I that. Did I tell you that story where, you know, I, I go up there on the sound check. There's like nobody in this big, massive field. And I'm going, oh, my God, about 20 people. Again. Yes. And, and then it was packed. <laughs> and next thing you know, we get up on stage and it's like, oh, my God. You know, it was like as people as far as you could see all the way to the back. And I was like, where are the where are these people <laughs> come from? <laughs> Well, I mean, they came to see Midnight Star and they knew there's no parking on the dance floor. Yeah, there's no parking. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, but they were, I mean, you know, those old school bands are great. You know, it's one thing to hear them on vinyl. Uh, it's another to hear them live, you know, and uh, and experience the talent. It's really cool. But, yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. YOT Coffee Talk Land. Welcome. Welcome. It's just Bill and me, but you know what? It's still going to be a great show. It might actually be the best show, right? right. <laughs> yeah. The unadulterated truth. Oh, yeah. He's going to keep it real for all of us, even me. You know, <laughs> talking nonsense, he's going to call me on it. It's going to be ridiculous. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. So, but before we start, hey, man, um, you know, uh, hearts out to and um prayers to the folks in florida the, absolutely uh, called Ida adalia i think is a, yeah. a massive category four or three storm that just hit uh the big bend in florida this morning um you know prayers to all the folks there that uh, are in storm's way and you know have to suffer all the all the rain and the wind, you know, I, it looks like it's pretty insane. Um, nothing well, like them and, and still, still, I mean, lots of, lots of love out to the folks in Hawaii as well, man. Oh yeah, I know. I, I, you know what? I just still can't believe that. Um, yeah. And, um, I'll be going to Snapdragon summit and, uh, props to Qualcomm for supporting the economy. They could have easily just canceled the event and said, no, you know, uh, but uh, they're, they're going to go to support the, the community. I'm going, uh, and we're probably going to do some uh, charity and support work out there um, in Maui. You know, you just don't abandon people when they really need, uh, and you know, their, their economy is based on tourism. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, and you, you just don't ditch out. So I, I was really touched by uh, Qualcomm's decision to keep the, the the event there but uh um hey what's up what's going on man just getting ready man i mean look we're we're very close to applied intelligence live in austin oh uh, yeah that 
That I'm really looking forward to that one. And and if you haven't gotten your tickets, folks, come on out. This is it. This <laughs> is, I mean, this is it. Um, you know, Rob, what do you mean by that? Oh, yeah. Well, this this is it. I mean, you got you got you got like 75 to 60, 60 to 75 percent of IoT Coffee Talk is gonna be there. Okay. We're going to we're going to be all together. Uh, with Applied Intelligence Live, we're gonna we're gonna run our end of of IoT Coffee Talk from the event. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought you were about to say sixty to sixty five year old, so you were referring to Steve Brummer. <laughs> you know how <laughs> <laughs> old he is. <laughs> hey, but you know what? It, even at that age, I gotta give that man props for balling the way he does. Oh yeah, 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 and you know it's. Uh, I can't do that. Don't tell him because I told him I'm going to dunk over him last week. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's look, like, man. He's like talking trash. Like he plays basketball. <laughs> hey, it's, and he does. Don't I mean, us, man. that, that right there, this, I mean, look, I, I want to be, I want to be like that when I grow up. Yeah. And you know what? Actually, Steve looks great. You would never know that he's like old like that. You know what I'm saying? No. I mean, yeah. look, Man, look, I, I'm gonna tell you that, that I mean, the real, the real, real talk. I was, I was like, I was playing in a men's league. I was 30, 32. I had to deal with everyone on the team. If I dunk in the game, I walk off the court. <laughs> if I dunk in the game, I walk off the court. Why? It's not gonna get any better than that. <laughs> It, it's it's only downhill from there, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. and I and I would do it, dunk, and just grab my bag and leave. And they're like, "Where are you going?" I'm going. I told you, you know the rules. <laughs> Game over. I've achieved yeah. my goal in life. One and, more check off the bucket list. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, so so for everyone, everyone out there, you know, yes, you can keep doing things as you get older and everything like that. But what's in your head is not on the court. Yeah, yeah. It's not on the court. Hey, ask Kevin Hart. Oh. <laughs> hey, but you know they got they got some short dudes with like serious hops, man. I, I've seen some videos of like guys who are five six that can oh yeah get up like right under the net just like the best of them. So it, it's insanity. You know, you never know. You know, when I was in Korea. There was this one. Um, there was this one guy from Canada. He's a Korean guy, right? This this dude could like freaking reverse dunk. He could do like one eighty and reverse dunk. And I was just like, "What?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. There's all kinds of wrong with this. <laughs> well, no, that's what, that's the anomaly. But I mean, yeah. but look, Kevin Hart's in his mid forties or yeah. something like that. And and is going to try to run against an ex football player that was a running back and tore up his groin. Oh, he's in a wheelchair. You got you got to take care of that groin. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah. hey, I don't play around, man. If anybody, yeah. if anybody asks me, you know, can you dunk today? I'm like, man, the only thing I'm dunking is donuts. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. This is good policy. Good policy. So, um, but um, yeah, you know, uh, what, what's that thing called again? AI Applied Applied, Applied Intelligence Applied. Live Austin. Oh, geez, man. Applied Intelligence Live Austin. Okay, that's that's tough, man. That's tough. Yeah. You got to get a yeah. better name than that, but you well, they they stuff, they, right? they they abbreviated down to uh, AI Live, you know, yeah. Yeah. which you know. But at the end of the day, look, come out, talk to your boy. I I mean, let's 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 talk tech. What yeah. problems can we solve? Let's talk real stuff. Yeah. So speaking of real stuff, this week uh, I'm. Uh, virtually attending Google Cloud Next. And I wish I actually went there in person because uh, I, I just have a lot of questions, you know, um, <laughs> a lot of questions. Um, 
Yeah, as expected. I mean, the keynote with, uh, uh, you know, Thomas Kurian and his whole crew, uh, you know, hats off to them for putting on a, a pretty good show. I mean, even though I'll tell you, Google, you need to work on your replay video or your live stream because that stuff is like, it is not even like 480 whatever I you know like <laughs> friggin yeah you know it's like pixelated as you know oh, it's, oh, like, wow. it's re it, come on now you can't you cannot be pixelated as <laughs> no, you can't be pixelated. and then you know like the keynote in the beginning part you know uh, you know uh Sundar you can't he's like he's like Mac Headroom and it, it, it's recorded like that I, and when I was initially listening in on it on the keynote, I thought it was like, wait a minute, this can't be happening. This must be my internet connection, right? But then I did the replay and it was the same thing. But anyway, uh, obviously it was, the whole thing was just all about gen, gen AI, but um, so they're using it for all kinds of stuff, right? They uh, announced like Vertex um, AI, their whole library of models and stuff like that, that uh, similar to what, um, Actually, a lot of what they're doing is similar to what uh, NVIDIA kind of released with their foundation models, you know, yeah. uh, Neom and what do they call it? Uh, Bio Neom and then Picasso, right? So these basic base models, but these guys are like going for full on, we want to support all models type of thing on our platform. And then they got like the whole duet, their whole, their version of a Gen AI chat, chat, capability or a co-pilot type of thing and i, I like the tie I, I like the name duet kind of like that better than co-pilot you know duet's kind of yeah but i mean i mean again call it what you want to call it <laughs> oh no here we go, here All we right. go. call it Keep what it you real. want to call it let's stop with i mean we're the ones hallucinating <laughs> Thinking oh. that this is, you know, I mean, come on, look. Practicality says, and 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 shout out to Ryan Trees for moderating oh, yeah. that, that panel, right? Because I think I heard so many good things in there, but the key thing that I walked away with was going, yes, there needs to be more of that, is listen, GPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who said that? Was that um, Martin? Martin said that, right? That's, uh, I, I don't know. Martin was... On my screen, Martin was on the far left. Yeah, he he's it wasn't he, it wasn't him. Big, it was big, it was advocate of uh, Chat GPT. You know, he, and he's been tinkering around with it a lot. You know, so he's you would classify him as evangelist. Actually, I invited him on so that he can you know talk crap and call us you know stupid and wrong which is fine you know i, I welcome i welcome those yeah. conversations we still haven't had the people come on and talk about this thing called a digital twin so i will i mean look i'm not saying that that i'm 100 right but 99.9 .9 counts yeah so <laughs> pretty damn good it's better, you know, than, better I mean, than most ai man most AI hey. is only 95 percent but um, no, you know what? I'm actually thinking because uh, uh, one of the next curve newsletters, uh, I, I did a thing on virtual twins, not to stomp on Michael uh, Greaves, <laughs> uh, you know, digital twin concept. And he he um, uh, I think he tried to to, uh, you know, uh, he tried to, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying not to say a bad word here. Tear me a new one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, no, he's a nice dude. You know, actually, I told him share your stuff. You know, and um, uh, tell the whole world what you think. And um, I, I'm thinking that we should have him on if, if he if he's. Uh, I mean, we 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 idea. should. I mean, I'll say it. I'll say it again, just for every everyone you know that's listening. Um, the, the term digital twin is so overused um, and 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 it is a tool. It is not the panacea. Yeah. It is a tool that relies on other things. It relies on so much. 
Yeah. Just like, I mean, just like uh, uh, this whole talk about, you know, gen AI and where it's used and how it's used and yeah. you, you can keep your data private and all these other things. I'm like, nobody is addressing the real issue. No one is addressing the lack of guardrails. Oh, and, and yeah. during that panel, you heard them talking about guardrails. Yeah. Well, but you know what? that's because they don't exist right now. Yeah, effectively. And and so, yeah, th there was this one, I, one of the panelists, she said something like, yeah, you know, the, someone came up with this hallucination thing. It's like, no, 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 not someone came up with this. Anyone, uh, and you know, uh, God bless her for saying what she did, uh, but that's not correct. Uh, hallucinations are a real thing that these things do it, it and it's because they are probabilistic models they just don't have judgment <laughs> you know what i'm saying and, and the stochastic model is not going to give you what is right it's going to give you what's most statistically probable right based on the corpus of data that it's ingested and it's uh, it's referencing and has kind of shaped all of its parameters right and, and so no uh hallucinations aren't something somebody made up these are real problems like what i call artificial dementia right things like mode collapse drift and all these other i mean there's a whole range of problems so when people go hey you know uh, create your own llm or you know create your own gen ai model or application there's a lot of stuff that happens in the back end i mean it's not like um you know, open AI went out and then overnight, you know, had uh, GPT-3 or GPT-2 and all the yeah. previous generation. It took them millions of dollars to do this stuff and years, you know? Um, so this idea that somehow all this stuff is easy and, you know, that's one of the things is, you know, I'm always, that's why I want to I want to actually be at Google Cloud next is because they they try to make it sound so easy. No, number one, you're using some frameworks that look like your chatbot framework from before Gen AI, and a lot of the stuff that you call natural language, it looks like you actually have to be a developer to actually reference all of the data fields that you want populated in your prompt. Right. So you're discounting the whole design cycle everything you're just looking at that one uh, that one task where you're generating the code and you know that actually there's a lot of tools for that there's, there's been cold code generation tools for a long time there's a thing called find and replace <laughs> there's a thing you called excel saying? yeah so there are all these different methods to do the same thing a lot faster and ch uh, actually um, cheaper because Gen AI is not for free, as everyone kind of thinks that they think that, oh, you know, this stuff is free. Uh, it, it's actually a very expensive form of computing. Well, and it's and it's free. The, the term free. I mean, look, I'm 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 going to I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the term free is not free to you. It's free to the one that produced it because you're training the models for them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, there was there was there was a, a a post on on LinkedIn recently that that I commented on where you know purportedly you use this to replace a person or for a small to medium sized businesses you can have uh, an admin yeah that responds to emails. Yeah. Handles your calendars and things like that. And I'm like, hold up. Yeah. What if you are a small to medium sized business and you turn your, you know, some of your critical assets, such as responding to email, such as your calendar and sending calendar invites and everything like that to something that you know nothing about. Yeah. I don't know how this thing is going to respond. And I'm like, why would I ever do that? I want I mean, clearly I want to go out of business. You know what? Here, here, I mean, you're you're bringing up a great point because I'll tell you right now, after all these years, you know, like on your photo app, whether it's Google or Apple or whatever, you have that thing that like classifies photos based on a, an identity. So if yeah. your father, it'll basically 
find all the photos that look like your yep. that look like your father's in it, and then uh, it'll uh, it'll um, categorize them or tag them, right? Uh, uh, these applications think my daughter is my son. You know, and, and then they want you to correct a it. Difference, you can't. Yeah, but then they want you to correct it, and when you correct it, it goes, "Oh, wait a minute, this is so." You just gave it a training lesson. Figure it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, but you're making a great point. Is how it, after all these years, if you can't even do like image classification well, okay, and it screws up a lot. There are a lot of errant. Um, uh, classifications that happen where you actually manually have to go in and you have to do the human thing. You have to correct all of, you have to correct the 5%, which ends up being a lot of work because you have to, you have to go through all of the photos, right? To say, okay, well, and then, yeah, my, my son does kind of, when he was a baby, looks similar to my daughter. And I don't know, man, that doesn't work. And I wouldn't rely on something unless it proves itself over time. But what we've learned with AI and, I, you know, I just had a chat with the guys over at um, a Momenta and uh, really brilliant guys. Right. Um, very experienced. And it was funny because we started talking about AI and um, um uh, Sid, I, I forgot his last name, but sorry, Sid, don't kick my ass when you see me. He was talking about AI. I said, look, you know what? Um, it, it's, it's just not all that is cracked up to be out in the field. So even in IoT, where we think that AI has this transformative potential, the thing is, is people have been trying to work with this stuff for a long time. And yeah. you have to understand where Gen AI fits in the equation of stuff that already exists and the architectural decisions, the design decisions for a AI enabled application that you go through today. Uh, you can't just all of a sudden because of gen AI, I think that you throw all that stuff out. It, not even frigging close, you know? Um, anyway. I mean, no, I mean, but, but here's the thing, and this is, you know, I'm willing to debate and I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to learn. Um, I mean, because that's part of what if this is all part of what I do anyway, is yeah. continue to learn what's on the edge in terms of technology wise. How is it applied? Where are the gaps? How do we fill the gaps? That type of thing. Yeah. But when when, you know, and, and this is where I'm, I'm kind of salty at, at the at the route that LinkedIn is taking, because people can come out and just say anything. And, and that particular post that I responded to, and I'm not giving them airtime, but that particular post that I responded to, I, I clearly, I just asked that question about why would anyone do this? How is this any different than a chat bot that's sitting out there today? Maybe it's a step up. And I asked, I, I tagged uh, our girl, Debbie, the data diva oh, Reynolds yeah. in it. She came back. She, you know, basically cooperated what I was saying and, and, and added on to it. I, then we got a response, both of us. But, you know, the COO said to me, we've been purposely silent as we're still in early beta. You can download our privacy policy because I asked about the privacy policy. Um, and if anyone wants to look through it, OK, we'll pause. I go and I look at the privacy policy because it's on Discord. The privacy policy clearly states at the very beginning, this was written by A.I., Oh, geez. Yeah. That's I'm done. Incest. At that point, I'm done. It's like incest, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. You're you're telling me you have a problem. I mean, that that is the definition of a circle jerk. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Uh, anyway. <laughs> so, you know what? Um, the, you're bringing up a really great point. Now, uh, okay. So, bright side, we're always like crapping on people. So, let's say something nice. No, I believe, no. Look, I would say this. I will say this. But it's their fault, not ours. <laughs> it would, it would, I mean, but don't don't spew BS because yeah, somebody's well, got to call it. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, you know, I, I, and so this is the thing, you know, I'm always doubtful about these demos. It doesn't matter who it comes from, whether it's Microsoft, Google, or any big name, because, you know, what people don't realize is, what, what people do is they see these these things. I actually go to conferences like you do, 
And I've been looking at Gen AI for a long time, right? Because a lot of semiconductor companies have been pushing this stuff for more than a year, about two years. Um, you go and you look at what, how the stuff works on the back end, and then there is no way you can believe that demo. And that's why I want to be there because I want to talk to the engineers. I want to get deep down and technical about what are we really looking at here and then put it in the broader context of solutioning and designing and implementing something that's going to be valuable. You know what I'm saying? Not just like watching these like friggin scripted things where, you know, literally somebody in the background is probably praying to God that the, the large language model doesn't hallucinate and do some trippy thing. Um, you know, so I, I'm always skeptical and that's why, you know, everyone out there, especially your, the technical leaders out there and CTOs need to ask really hard questions. Don't, you know, don't get bedazzled by all these, you know, demos, uh, you know, because, Usually there's an assumption about the data availability, the level of privacy, um, how they're interfacing with different services or how they would have to interface with different services within your portfolio of stuff, whether it's data applications and, and, and um, IT stuff. <laughs> don't don't assume uh, because you know you, you, if you think through like you know that's why i love uh i love talking to the guys on iot coffee thought because we all have like a uh, implementation background design background we we've architected things we we see these things that you uh that people who've never done this stuff have absolutely no clue about because they just go off of the press release headlines or you know hey look at this demo they did it was like cool shit you know most work it's going to transform everything not even close think about all the big data the friggin you know bi analytics ai all this stuff from the past we've already seen this like dog and pony show millions of times the things that get in the way are the it's us because the world's not perfect and these guys assume that there's some level of perfection to support that demo so that i mean that's why i really want to go but uh, just want to say, an, uh, you know, a, 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 a thing that I think and uh, is good that Google is doing is they're trying to uh, push, and I don't know to what level of quality, this idea of private enterprise um, large language models, right? How they sandbox these things, isolate them, I don't know. But I've seen some, there's a, 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 an approach called RAG which is really interesting where they only send the, the uh, metadata to a public cloud. And then um, what it does is um, there is a, let's call it a natural language understanding layer that does uh, the uh, interface, the language interface, and then summary when, uh, for anything that comes back from a search engine. And so this is what I think you're seeing with Bard and um what do you call it bing chat right the the architecture uh gen ai architecture that they're using for the, those applications um even that uh, even okay i get it but sending metadata is actually also kind that's of still data it's, <laughs> yeah. still, it's still data i mean in yeah. a number it's of like, instances this is how you architect your data uh, but you know what i'm saying it's like okay cool but that's why I want to be there. I want to ask those tough questions of like, okay, how do you guys really do, how do you create that isolation? How do you actually support privacy and confidential, confidentiality principles? How do you freaking do this stuff? Don't just put up slides and say that you're doing it. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to understand, I want to understand the, the proprietary nature, right? Yeah. I mean, th th look, look, let me, let me say that again, I understand these businesses have launched and there has been investments made because yeah. someone believes that this can go somewhere. Fair enough. Yeah. But let's set let's separate and segregate the marketing from the actual. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't show me what ifs. Yeah. Show me a problem that you've solved. Because I sat with I sat with my team and said, all right, I'm like. What can we, what can we use 
I'm not, forget Gen AI, forget large language. What can we use AI for in what we're doing? Where do we garner the benefit? And I'm going to tell you where we landed. Maybe for some of the repetitive exercises we go through when we're building some of our software solutions, we can templatize them, automate them. And I'm like, how is that using AI? We can templatize these things anyway. Right. You can. And it's a perfect example. One of the demonstrations that they showed was how they, you can use um, you can use Duet to uh, compose a presentation based off of data that's in or, you know, content and data that's in your Google Drive. Right. And um, it's like, well, yeah, use template and then you populate stuff. OK. Um, you, somebody had to create the template to begin with, right? right. And, and, that, and that's the same with almost every single example is that someone, so like, for instance, the one that I posted about, which was the search, right? Uh, where the guy, the gentleman, he plopped the DMV handbook into, uh, into uh, what is it, duet. And um, he, he was doing some queries and stuff like that. It's like, you know what, I've, yeah, it, it, it's kind of cool. Here's the problem in practical instances, okay, where I've used these types of uh, chat bots, uh, because it is kind of pushed on you, they've, they've made it like the first line of defense um, <laughs> for, you know, angry, angry customers. Uh, the, the response that it pumps out when it says, what can I help you with, is the same thing that you can basically navigate to uh on on, on the side on the support page yeah more detail but yet uh, you know doing the going that path number one is doesn't uh it's not as expensive uh in, in terms of sustainability impact and then uh going through the chat gpt all it's doing is is doing that a uh, rag thing that i was telling you about before and then bringing back it, it's just scraping stuff off of web pages that someone had to write. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like, okay, this is really cool that you can have conversation, right? Really cool, especially if you're going to play Zork. Um, but when you really think about it, how valuable, is, how transformative is this? You know, and a lot of the other examples, if you're thinking about it in the bigger context and how it that application actually yields productivity benefit you start to see that okay it's getting a little bit diluted you know because the benefit and the range of impact is actually at a very specific task level right and maybe you know in certain instances so i think this is like a long tail right when the fat end there's certain applications where it's just gonna friggin' kick ass right yeah and there's like this really long tail of stuff where it's really not going to have a huge impact, just like IoT. Like every, every everything else that everyone gets excited about. But we're going through the, but dude, you, you called it, man, POC. We are in the early phases of pilot. And, you know, even with like what Google and Microsoft, all those guys are talking about is like, yeah, um, this is a preview which is like, this is beta, and then we will go GA at the end of the year. And yeah, I mean, you, you hope you will. I mean, that's, you know, that's the, that's the only, I mean, again, you know, companies are striving to do these things. The only thing I implore each and every single one of those companies, please, somebody, pick up, you know, an ethics as it relates to AI, pick up the privacy as it relates to AI, pick up the cybersecurity aspect of the attack surfaces that you're creating by using this technology. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you want to differentiate yourself? Go do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and and it's interesting that you bring up attack surface because one of the cool demos that I I saw uh, was uh, 
related to cybersecurity and identifying it is more like forensic stuff, actually. It's not even proactive. Even though they talked about proactive, it's like, no, this isn't proactive. Actually, Gen AI stuff, most of it is not going to be proactive. You have to. Well, no, it has to react to, go to off, something. It's going to go off of old data, right? And it's going to look at, once you've already been compromised, it's going to go through and look at your logs and try to find anomalous behaviors, um, which is, you know. Uh, so people need to think about that. Uh, because you know what would be really transformative if this thing could just sniff out when somebody is going to do something nasty, right? Um, yeah. Before it happens, you know that's magic. Uh, well, it, not it, I mean, look, forensics. a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of old heads that that are that are you know in the cybersecurity space that knew back in the day. When people were trying to attack a network and they sent them to a honeypot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I still think that was one of the most ingenious things ever. Because people are over there, I'm hacking, I'm hacking, I'm hacking. You are hacking nothing, son. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are over here <laughs> hacking away and we're watching you. Um, I mean, it, it, I just think that, you know, I, I think that the the tech for tech's sake is is great if you want to have a science experiment um yeah. and and if you want to develop use cases don't put anything out and go it's it's for use and here are our use cases that we think is going to go solve the problem first yeah yeah i mean um i i totally agree with you um and this is this, this is why i think this is such a big gamble i think it if these guys took more of a a, 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 a a transparent but more let's call it passive approach that would have been that would be a, a bit more responsible than what i think they're doing right now which is i mean if you think about it most of these uh, these guys they're putting out stuff that's like instead of talking about here's new things that we've released and look at all this great cloud stuff that we have new tooling new databases uh new uh, instances with silicon that's going to help accelerate your workloads and sustainability and all the other uh, other important things but focusing on this stuff that's really not that ready not proven uh just so that you can look like you're winning the gen ai war whatever the hell that is that that's just a concoction you know chill chillaxing sitting back like apple and say hey look you know um don't worry we're gonna, we're gonna do our thing you yeah know, we're not gonna i mean and i'm sure they monkey, will monkey, yeah monkey's ass out of ourselves um uh, you know trying to play this game you know it's like look we got to be careful because <laughs> we have to put privacy first confidentiality first and then we will see how this stuff um gets implemented you know whether it's in the cloud or across on you know device um about the application but then not putting the technology first um but anyway wow all all, all good man not not enough sleep or something something is wrong you know what it's you it's you bill it's you, man. I got mine. Yeah. I got, I got mine. The BMX of IoT and smart cities, you know? Hey. How did I do? That was pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was excellent. I was like waiting for you to recognize, man. You were like sitting there going. And then no, I, was I was like, oh. Four changes came around. You went, you started a <laughs> deal. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. But you know what was great is, is Stephanie. Forget, I, I bet you she knows all the lyrics on, on the X rated version, too. Oh, I bet. Not, not talking about, but not that there's any other version because if you you listen to the radio version, everything is bleeped out, you know? You can't hear anything. All you hear is, arm, yeah. arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insanity. But, um, yeah dude it's so got that um what else is going on man so um what are you guys gonna be talking about at uh artificial oh at ai ai, AI, AI live AI. austin yeah, yeah yeah i mean i'm on let's see oh okay so i'm on i'm having uh the main stage conversation 
um, with Dr. Ahmed talking about uh, digital twins versus oh, no. cognitive digital twins. Oh, oh no. That's going to be, that that's gonna be interesting. That there's going to be interesting. Um, then I've got like three or four other uh, uh, speaking parts, you know, throughout the, the two days, all of them around, uh, you know, how, how do we really solve, how do we really solve problems? I don't like, if I'm going to be on a panel and it's going to be a debate, I don't have canned responses and yeah. and please don't ask me what you want. You know, yeah. this this just uh, let's just get up there and have a conversation. Yeah. Because it's not like I haven't been doing this for a while. So, yeah. you know, let let's talk let's talk real and you know, the main thing that I want the anyone that comes and see me talk uh to walk away with is first and foremost, yeah, he's pretty honest. Yeah. Uh second, Seems like he knows what he's talking about. And I want to answer the questions that they have. Yeah. So I don't want to parrot back things that everyone else is saying. I'm non-compliant in those regards. Yeah. Um, yeah. You forgot something, though. What's that? You forgot something. The, the last impression, I think, is number three. It's like, this cat sounds like Barry White. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Real. Yes, yeah, yes. You know, like yes. my mom heard your voice and she goes, Oh, so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how come you can't have a voice like that? You know, I have to switch registers. This is like, you know, I got to talk like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can yeah. do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I really exactly. Want to. I can talk like this all day. <laughs> Yeah, and then you, and then you get yeah. that, you know. All of a sudden, yeah. you have people running up, going, "Hey, wait yeah. a minute! Can you, can you, can you be the DJ for my radio station?" <laughs> hey, I mean, so many times I, 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 mean, I can remember literally. You have a nice you know, voice, man. It's like freaking. Appreciate man. that. I, sexy man. I, 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 I hear people say it all the time. Can you say, "Welcome to the Quiet Storm." <laughs> in the midnight hour. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's too funny. Uh, but what about you, man? What else you got going on? Oh, hey, you know, before I get my butt kicked by um, Matt Hatton and uh, Jim Morich, uh, yeah, next curve. I, I I have a partnership with Transforma Insights. So, um, yeah, that was a big announcement from last week. Yeah, uh, kind of went to mark with this week. So really happy about that. So um, we're, uh, we're going to be going to market with East. Uh, uh, East oh, I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm going to screw this up. It's essential validated insights. You know what I'm saying? So okay, get on it. Get on it, people. You know, we, we keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, get if you, if you don't, I will call it out. Yes, yes, yeah. That, that's that's why uh, w w your name is going to be your nickname. <laughs> you have a lot of nicknames, but one of them is going to be Danger. <laughs> Danger. I will I will call it out, and the first thing they'll get is that shit will never work. <laughs> there you go. You know that oftentimes is you know that is a that is an answer, man. It's like you know. Um, no is a great answer for a lot it of is. stuff. It um, is. I mean, because then, I mean, tell me why it will. Tell me why it will work. I mean, in, yeah. in so many different instances. And it's, and, and it's, you know, I think, well, I'll close on this one. I think that a lot of solution companies are not taking into account, forget the flashy stuff, get down to the foundational stuff. Yeah, yeah. Of what it is needs in order to do these things. I mean, networking, understand that over the air updates is an extremely important thing. Cellular networks have been doing this for an awful long time. Yeah. What standard are they using when they were doing that? They're using very similar lightweight end to end type stuff. Why can't you just talk about that and just say, this is how we're doing that so that you can show where your differentiation is. It's not in the fact that you can do OTA. It's in the fact that your OTA may be a little different, but you use a standard approach so that anybody can leverage it. I mean, just get this. Let's talk standards. Let's just get down to standards. Yeah. 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 Why is that your final note? That's... 
Why'd you say that? I, I, I know that you have more to say. But, I do. Yeah, but you do. Yeah. We'll 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 leave that. We'll leave that. I mean discussion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And oh um going back to security. Um yeah, so they were they're doing some so the Google guys, they were doing some interesting things with uh, using Gen AI to, you know, review log, summarize things and this is where the hallucination stuff gets a little bit iffy. It's like you have to double check and make sure that because, you know, uh, I've tried to use the the um, all these other uh, Gen AI tools for the same capacity and it just hallucinates the hell out of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? So, again, we're not we don't want to, you know, we want to just keep things real, I think is really the way. So you know, the technology leaders out there, these are things you need to just check. So as you go and you get approached by these guys, ask the better questions, right? The important questions that, um, you know, you should as an architect or a solution designer um, and, and a technologist, you know, don't just, you know, assume that all the stuff magically works. I know most of you don't, but we're here to reinforce and highlight some of those additional factors that you should think about as you are entertaining and POCing and piloting these these new technologies. And it's not to say that there aren't going to be cool applications. They will there will be, but you also have to look beyond that and this whole thing about sustainable um, AI, right? Because um, uh, this stuff is is not efficient computing. <laughs> it takes no. a lot of compute cycles and jewels it, it's not efficient and and again it i mean drive towards the standards i mean whatever standards drive toward, participate in them yeah. spend that time it'll only make your solution better yeah yeah that and then uh build some community around those standards so that there's some degree of harmony i mean you know all that stuff is hard but then don't get stuck buy that stuff there's always middleware <laughs> <laughs> that's what i always like say like it start with the show what it takes to deliver your solution you and go. then the differentiation becomes clear yeah 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 so hey man um yeah that was, this has been a good discussion really cool but of course you know we got to cap off this hour almost hour we're almost at an hour here uh, by saying, look, um, we're all about the digital divide. And so if you want to look really good and also do some good, uh, go to elevateourkids.org, okay, and pick up one of these shirts, order. You know, they look really good. I mean, geez. Look. They feel good, too. Yeah, they they're, these are really good shirts. Yeah. They're quality. I can't believe And it. isn't that what we all want to do, elevate our kids? Yeah, and and so all proceeds go to our, the elevateourkids.org charity to put laptops, okay? Because you can't just have connectivity. You actually have to have the devices to help uh, kids K through 12 get connected and participate in our digital stuff, right? Whether it's economy, education, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to do some good here. Hopefully you guys are willing to do some good and then help us out here you can also just make a donation so if you just feel like you're charitable and you have like 90 million bucks blippy do it oh yeah you know actually that would be a self-serving uh donation because there's so many kids in the digital divide who can't watch a lot of these kid shows um it's a great way of like expanding your markets so think about do it, it. Yeah, and make sure to subscribe to IoT Coffee Talk at www.iotcoffeetalk.com. Uh, and then uh, like, share, okay, um, and share it with your kids. But parental guidance is highly recommended. Highly, 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 highly. Yes. Highly, yes. Highly, I mean, if they get stuck, know. yeah. If they get stuck and they hear something that you didn't want them to hear, that's your hallucination. <laughs> But uh, you know what? We're here every week. So thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. You know, the two or three of you guys who actually make it this far every week. And 
you know, eventually one of these days, okay, Bill, we're gonna be we're gonna be like ridiculously famous. They're just gonna look back at our stuff and go, oh wow, these guys were not too stupid, you know? <laughs> yeah, hey, the whole thing about it is perseverance. Keep doing it. Ah, but you know what? I love talking with you guys. I learn. It, it's stimulating. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. I yeah. You. Plus, we don't have to agree with each other all the time. That's ah, the part I like. A little boring. Yeah, that's why I want to get. I want to get Martin up here to basically trash trash on me, <laughs> and I get Michael Greaves up here and other folks who want to debate and have a have a good time. You know. Open. I mean, when you when you posted this week. You should you should again put it in the in the post that we welcome if you are in Gen AI, if you are in to digital twins, if you are in large language models, if you're in on all of these things, come on down. Come on down. Yeah, the price is right. Yes, it oh, is. By the way, um, yeah, rest in peace, Bob Barker. Oh, yes, yes. That, all these legends, you know, at first it was like Pee Wee Herman. And then that was Bob Barker. Bob Barker, yeah. You know, legends. But we'll see you next week. All right, take care. Bye.